Well, it happened again yesterday, and it's not fun. It's not fun to talk about, but I've documented my journey of doing Medicare insurance entirely over the phone for the last 10 years. I've documented that all the way from the beginning, and so part of that documentation process and chronicling this not only for my uh, agents and followers on YouTube and MedicareAgentTraining.com where we talk about what we're doing behind the scenes, also for the legacy that will far live past me to my children. One of the most difficult things that uh, a business owner has to do is to part company with someone who has been in your employee. That is, you have to fire somebody. And it's not pleasant, it's not comfortable, but there are lessons that I've been learning over these last 10 years. And some of those lessons I think are best learned through someone else's experience rather than your own. I've never talked to an agency owner before about how they set up their agency. Um, the only people that I know that do what I do, I meet on company trips around the world with different carriers. Uh, there's not another call center here in Charleston, South Carolina, where I am, where I can just go sit in there and you know, chew the fat and discuss, hey, what did you do in this case? What did you do in the... So we figured it all out on our own here in my office, at least in my world. Maybe there's a call center training program somewhere, but... Um, it didn't exist when I started Medicare agent training in 2013, I can tell you. A lot of copies of that website have been made in the years since, but I digress. Um, the tough thing is, when you do have to let somebody go, I always reflect back. I always think, what did I do wrong? Uh, what did my staff possibly do wrong? Where did we go awry? And then when I come to the conclusion, as I often do, that we did everything by the book. We did everything right by our policy manual, trained them the right way. They had every opportunity afforded to the people who have greatly succeeded in our office. So what's different? Well, one thing that you cannot provide somebody is their desire to do a good job, their desire to show up every day, their work ethic, their habits that they've brought from them, uh, from other places. One of the things that I always ask in the back of my mind when we're looking at a new candidate to be an employee here is why are they looking for a job in the first place? You know, before the coronavirus pandemic, uh, the unemployment rate was at a record low. Everyone that was worth hiring pretty much had a job somewhere, and they were scooped up quick. Companies were competing in an ever-increasing battle for who could pay the most, who could get the most benefits. And we already have a, a rich benefits package here just because we like to take care of the people, but it was a really competitive world out there. So anytime someone's coming in to interview for a job, I ask myself, why is this person sitting in front of me? What about them made the other people let them go or had them quit because it was too uncomfortable, it was not a good fit? They can look great on paper, their resume look wonderful, but at the end of the day, you ultimately find out the baggage that a person has brought. They can either come from your existing industry, maybe in a different line of work, or come from a different call center environment, things that you would think would lend themselves to a person being a good fit for what it is that we do. We talk to people over the phone all day and we help answer their questions, we help educate them, and ultimately we leave the people that we interact with in a better position than they were when we found them or when they found us online as the case in our business. So in this particular case, I always look back like I did and I reflect on what did we do? We did everything correctly. And the other th question that I always ask myself is how, back, how far back can we go that we could put our finger on, we could identify where things went wrong? Or, better way of putting it, when we should have seen that this was not a good fit at the earliest possible opportunity. See, one thing that I heard very often from other business leaders is Hire slow, fire fast. However, I've got a heart, and sometimes that screws me up in the business world when I think with my heart instead of with my business brain. And I think, well, maybe we can just, you know, cajole this person into doing the right thing with more incentives. You know, maybe we can have to write them up when they do something wrong or when they lie about what they did for a client that they really didn't do. That should have been my first tip off in the latest case. But in every case, I always want to look back and go, what could I have done differently? When you've resolved the fact, I'm talking to myself here, when I've resolved myself to the fact that there was nothing that we did wrong, it simply was the work ethic brought into our organization where a person thinks that once they're comfortable, once they're fully trained and they're on their own, that their time management is best spent in some cases 
trying to hide and trying to get out of as much as possible, trying to do the bare minimum, as they say, trying to do just enough not to get fired, and as uh, the other side of that was paying people just enough not to quit, which we don't do, then you have to look at the person. And so reflectively, I look back and say, okay, in our next hiring process, what can we do to identify the personality traits that may exist that would indicate to us that this person is not a good fit? And so the challenge is getting rid of a person soon enough for their benefit and for ours so that they can go and be flourishing and thrive and do something else where maybe the requirements on them are not as much as they are in here. And like when the phone rings, we kind of want people to answer it. When people ask questions, did you take care of this with that client? We want them to honestly tell us what they actually did. Maybe it's too much of an expectation, I don't know. But on me, what can I do different next time? That's what I ask myself in every termination case. And too often, the answer is always, I should have let him go sooner. I should have seen the writing on the wall. And collectively, we in the management here get together and say, look, next time, let's try to act sooner. Sure, we'll try corrective, preventive action. We'll try an incentive to do the right thing for the collective, for everybody to step up and do better as a group. And we'll identify those people who do wrong individually, single them out individually, privately, and try to counsel them into you know, compliant behavior. But still, at the end of the day, what can we do to identify where the person that's not a good fit is as soon in that relationship as possible, preferably within the first 90 days of the probationary period, so that we don't both waste time, waste investment, getting them licensed places, you know, here we pay for their licensing course, their licensing, their fingerprinting, their licenses in all the states, their appointments with all the companies. It's a very expensive process, very expensive, not the least of which is their salary and benefits, 401k contribution, full health insurance, everything that we pay for. How do we avoid as much pain as possible? And it comes back to, it's my fault. It's my fault because I should have identified sooner in the process that this person was not responding to training. When I was in the army, there were people that washed out of basic training and they always would say, failure to adapt to the army lifestyle or not responding to training. And when you identify that as early on as possible, the problem with me is two-sided. If they're technically proficient, they get the whole Medicare thing, they understand it all, they grasp it right off the bat, they can regurgitate the Medicare benefits backwards and forwards within five or 10 days of being here, they understand the companies, the rates, the carriers, the history, the applications, what's involved in communicating benefits. They get the technical side perfect. And yet the personality is not conducive to our culture here as a fun place to be. You know, they can't get along with people or they simply can't show up to work or they're always bringing personal drama into the workplace. My challenge is they're technically proficient. So let's give them some leeway on the personality side. Yeah, maybe they don't fit in the culture right away, but gosh, they sure did great on that conversation with the senior. They knew their stuff. There has to be a balance. On the other side, we've had employees here who have been so great with the personality that everybody loved this person. Just a wonderful, wonderful person. Bubbly on the phone. The, cu the customers just absolutely loved this person. But on the technical side, once this person was gone, we find errors after errors after errors after errors after errors that wasn't picked up when they were here because these things happen in the middle of AEP when it was all hands on deck, everyone's going crazy, and it's a scramble just to accommodate the answering of the phone. So what do you do? You have to find that balance between, again, talking to myself, technically proficient and a personality that's adaptive to the culture, at least compatible with the culture that we're trying to have here. We like to shut the office down sometimes and go bowling, go watch a movie, go hang out and have happy hour together as a collective group of people. And if the person can't fit within that culture, then they're not a good fit for the company. And certainly we don't want someone to adapt their personality and change who they are and be somebody completely different. But if they don't get along with anybody and everyone thinks that they're backbiting and talking behind their back and bringing in drama from outside the office, then no matter how technically proficient that person is, they're not going to be a good fit. And the sooner that we can prune that problem, the better for the collective. The better for that person because they can find a better place to go. 
and then on the other side, if the person is technically proficient, but then they bring in the drama, that's not good either. Or if they can't do the application, they can't get the Medicare side, but they're just the best person ever. You'd want to have drinks with this person, but they just can't pick up the job. Both of those are the, the extremes of which I really, really struggle. And the last one is the person who tries to do everything that they can. They show up early. They stay late. They help you by doing things in the office that are not even part of their job because they want to contribute to the culture of the office in every way that they can. Everyone gets along with this person and they're really, really, really trying to do a good job, but yet they just can't master all the complexities of the multitasking that's involved, the follow-up, you know, asking the right questions every single time, checking the right boxes in every single case. That's what really tears at my heartstrings is the people who go above and beyond with their work ethic and yet the technical side they just can't pick up and they constantly ask the same questions over and over again. So there has to be that balance of personality, work ethic, and technical prowess to be able to accomplish the perfect person that we have here. Thank God as of today, as I document this in May of 2020, we're at 12 employees. Everybody getting along, everything working really good, but it's always that one that got away that both makes me ask, why did we hire this person if they weren't a good fit? What did I miss on that? Did I do everything that I possibly could on that? And then did I let them go soon enough? The answer is I always fall short. I'm trying to get better at that, but I really want to get better at identifying when there's not a good fit, both for their sake and for mine, and get better at terminating that relationship as early as possible so that everyone in the office benefits with the least amount of stress, strife, and frustration, because that's the part that I take home. When there's a problem with somebody at work and it's not fitting or they're not getting along or they can't pick up things and we're having constantly fixing problems behind them, those are the frustrations that I bring home and, you know, gets talked about at home. It's when everybody's happy at the office, which is usually the case, everyone's happy, the sales numbers are up, which means we're helping more and more people, putting them in a better place than when we first found them. So that I can work on working on the business and in involving the marketing and they can work in the business on taking care of the people that are coming to us. That's when everything's firing on all cylinders. But these things will happen. In the Bible, there's a scripture that says it rains on the just and the unjust alike. So we're all going to have times where we have good days and bad days. We have people that work with us that get along great and those that don't. I just need to, for myself, get better at paying attention to the subtleties. What are the small things when something just isn't right? And I think one of the things that I've, I've laid down as a line in the sand going forward is when someone lies to a manager here about something that they've done to the benefit of the client but they really didn't do it, that should be in detective work we would call that a clue and a person who is a liar at work to get out of doing something um, does not just evolve to that degree they've brought that with them that's part of their personality it's part of their culture and that's something that left unchecked and see what I always try to struggle with is whatever we're doing in the off time of the year and off time I mean when we're only doing you know one or two hundred clients a month instead of four hundred to six hundred clients a month during annual enrollment period this is the time that we can really supervise and listen to recordings and look at the applications and look over their shoulder to make, th make sure that they're being managed correctly. Whereas during AEP with such high volume, it's more and more difficult to do that. So we need to amplify anything that we discover during the slow times and then project that out to the middle of AEP in the worst possible case scenario and say, okay, if this is the work ethic in the slow time, what in the world is it going to degrade to when there's all the pressure and lack of oversight that is inherent in the world of the AEP, the busiest time of the year when everything's compressed and we do you know, more volume than any other time. So we have to give more credence and more attention to those things during this time because they don't get better. They just don't. And you can try to correct them as much as possible, but when you have a personality flaw that has to do with work ethic or telling the truth, showing up on time, not calling in sick on Fridays and Mondays just to extend a weekend because vacation time's not available yet. These are all things that add up and they're things that we need to get better at identifying as maybe not a good fit sooner and sooner to save both them time and frustration and us the same. 
So that's my journey. That's where we are. That's where we are in you know 2020. We'll continue to expand, continue hopefully to get better. Um, I did study human resources in college, and that was my most fascinating thing was trying to do like the testing to find out which personality traits are going to be the best fit for an organization. Um, but people can often manipulate those tests and give the answer that they think that you want to hear as opposed to, of course, the reality that only sets in, unfortunately, over the course of time. And time reveals all. But anyway, take care. I hope you're doing well in your business. Onward and upward, there are a lot of people, you know, over 33, 34 million people as I make this recording now that are unemployed in our economy, that are great people through no fault of their own have lost their employment and are looking for opportunities. Those are the people that we're trying to find. We're actively looking for those people because we're expanding, we're growing to meet the needs of an ever-growing, ever-aging population that's coming into our space, which is Medicare, where we specialize. And we just have to keep our eye on the ball, moving forward, putting behind us those things that are past and looking forward to those things that we can achieve every time getting better, improving little by little, step by step, and learning from our mistakes. So that's my goal. God bless you in your business. I hope you're doing well. I'm Chris Westfall. Have a great day. Bye-bye.